Hey, back me, Jeff, back again. Part two of my trip to Somerville, South Carolina. If you missed the first part, in brief, went to Somerville, had to visit some friends down there while we're here in our temporary location in the middle of nowhere, South Carolina. We drove down to Somerville to visit some friends. I looked up ahead of time and found that there were some record stores there. Decided to hit one of them that was right in Somerville. Went there, just briefly, just briefly telling the story again. Went there, the store said they opened at 11. We stuck around, it was like a few minutes before 11. We stuck around till 11.15, nobody came. I called them and said, hey, is anybody coming today from out of town? And he texted me back and said, so sorry. I forgot to change the time on the door, but we're gonna be opening at 2.30 today. So I got a little grumpy. We went around town and just kind of did some stuff and sightseeing, decided to stick in town. So I was kind of, you know, a little on the negative side. We decided we, we stuck around. We went over to the store at a little after two and they were open. And my wife made me, she's like, now stay positive. You're going to find something great. Repeat after me. You're going to find something great. So because she could tell I was kind of down and out and wasn't expecting much. I'm like, this place is probably just going to be some guy. Because it was in the back of another store. It was two stores in one. I said, I'm going to be running into a place that's going to be like a uh, antique store where he's got stuff in the front. And he's got a booth in the back that has 100 albums. I admit, though, I saw pictures online and I could tell he had a bigger collection than that. But, you know, I go into this and I wasn't really very hopeful. My wife's like, no, positive. You're going to find some great stuff. So I'm looking and I'm finding some average stuff. And I'm not building a deck. I'm not building a stack of anything. I'm just kind of eyeballing stuff. I'm in, going through A through Z. A's, B's, threes. And I'm like, well, that'd be nice. That'd be nice. And I'm getting a gate. I'm kind of gauging the prices and looking at things. And I'm like, hmm. Some of the prices were a bit much. Obviously, when it came to the, it's like the guy knew when it came to some of the metal stuff, they were priced. And I'm like, ah, you know. So I'm kind of getting the feel of the land of prices. But some of this other stuff I saw, the decent average other stuff, was under 20 You know, things were like 10 and $12. But then you'd hit something great. As I'm going, I get into around K, and I found something I'm like, well, i got to have this. So now I'm in that mode of, okay, I'm going to buy something from the store. Now I need to start going back in my mind to the A through K's, things that I might have missed that I really want to have. But I'm going to wait and do that until I finally get to the rest of it to see how big of a stack, if any, I get. Let's go as we go. So I went back and got this one because I knew I had, I, I knew if I didn't walk out of the store with anything, I would definitely walk out with this first album. It was in the first aisle under A, even though it probably should have been under C because it's the guy's name, but it is the Alan Collins band. So when I saw this, it was like, uh, was it like twelve dollars? It is a cut corner, but the album was in pristine condition. If you're not familiar with Alan Collins, shame on you. But anyway, Alan Collins, guitar player from Leonard Skinner. So, in a nutshell, Leonard Skinner has a plane crash. People, some of them die. The band breaks up. They form the Rossington Collins Band, which is Gary Rossington and Alan Collins. Bunch of the guys from Skinner go to that band. They don't want to sound like Skinner, so they change it to a whole new style. They get a female singer. Rossington Collins Bands puts out two albums. They fold. Alan Collins goes over here to do the Alan Collins Band. Leon and uh, Billy Powell from Leonard Skinner follow him over here. So the three of them come onto this, and they do this for one album. Then Billy and Leon move on to do the band Vision, a Christian hard rock band. Phenomenal stuff. I have all of their stuff uh, that they've released. And then in 87, Leonard's going to get back together with Johnny Van Zandt on vocals to fill in for his brother. And Alan Collins at that point is in is kind of getting sickly. He's in a wheelchair and he later dies. I believe he died of pneumonia or something. But this is the only band, the only album by Alan Collins. And then I saw this Kick Axe Rock the World. Now, I have Kick Axe Rock the World. But my mind is, and I'm looking at this and I'm like, it's in the shrink wrap. It's got the insert. The album looks excellent. In the shrink wrap. I just totally cannot recall how well my copy is. Anyway, point is, I found another one. It was only 10 bucks. I wanted to rescue it. I wasn't sure of my copy. It's in shrink wrap. I now have two. I can VCLT that or one of those to somebody else. As I keep going in the case, I found Heart Attack by Crocus. So I knew I had most all of the early years of Crocus, but I knew I did not have this one. So this finishes what I would consider the heyday. 
they put out, uh, what is that? One, two, three, four albums in the 80s, if you don't count the live album. Four studio albums in the 80s. You had Headhunter in 83. Uh, you had the Blitz, you know, in 80, was it 84? Yeah. Change of Address in 86, and then Heart Attack in 88. These are all, you know, Headhunters, like, just solid hard rock, and then they just got a little more commercial. So this is in that commercial age, but it's still very much, you know, their metallic sound. Then you get into the 90s, and you got a whole different thing going. And then they change, and Mark leaves, the singer leaves, and they get some other stuff, and then he comes back, and blah, blah, blah. But this is what I call the heyday, the the, the 80s. Headhunter through heart attack. I needed it. I didn't have it. It was, I forget it was, I forget, I pulled the price off of this. Most of these were $10 and under. It was in primo condition. So yeah, this is one I'm like, I gotta have this. Now I kept going, and so I'm not really finding much as I go, and then I move over, and I move over, and I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Here's an OG copy of Rainbow Rising. So I'm like, okay, I need this, and so I grab this. Um, cover's kind of beat up. Album was in great condition. And I thought, you know, I've been waiting too long, and it's been crazy not to have this in my collection yet. So, anyway, I went ahead and grabbed that, and then I flipped a little more, and I found Difficult to Cure, which is a Joe Lynn Turner year rainbow that I also needed, also in great condition. And then this was just like, my wife probably thought I was, you know, having a heart attack, but I'm like, oh, Black Tiger by YMT. Not that there's anything super fancy about it except that this is like the only one that has eluded me i mean yeah you can buy it online but i find stuff occasionally you know out in the wild and i have yet to really find a copy of black tiger and i'm just like oh finally and again it was a reasonably priced and i just was like yes oh now i knew i had to buy some stuff for sure you know because i had this uh, in there so this was really great and i threw that in there now these next two this one in particular, there is a copy of this album in my local store in Virginia Beach. I think he wants like 25 bucks for it. It might even still be sealed, but I just didn't want to take a chance. I didn't know a whole lot about it. Tarzan, Tarzan. Uh, and, and so as you can see, it is a radio promo. This is the interesting thing, 590 AM. So this is an 80s album, but you know, an AM station was getting this. So, this is the part that I'm like, I gotta buy it just for the sticker. This guy, this, whoever this DJ was, and it's, you know, it is a promo stamp. Spanish band, metal band. They have some videos, some, uh, some videos online where they are singing in Spanish. But this album itself is just, you know, it's an English Sun album. Had to get it just because here's a guy, he's got a brief description and then he's got just some little notes on, actual songs on what i don't know if they ever played it you know but a less than average metal album side one in general sucks side two is a little better but not by much and then he's just got some the, mainly just stuff like song one ends cold two and three end cold fades ends cold fades so fades just notes on how it might play on the radio. So I'm curious if it got played because he's got enough notes on here to where it looks like they really might have played it. But in the condition it's in, it's in amazing condition. And so I had to buy it just because of that little review. Then I keep going and I find Vinnie Vincent Invasion. Again, one that I do not have that I really want. Um, this one was a little more. This one I think might have been about 20. But again, same guy. Extended review. Had to buy it for the review. Let me read this review for you. I'm like, does this guy write for a magazine? Because, I don't know, he's kind of, whatever. Vinny replaced Ace Fairly and Kiss, left after one tour. This album ha has everything a commercially viable metal band needs. Guys in crew, femme, makeup, blinding fast guitar solos, stupid and sexist lyrics, and a vocalist who's the result of the bastard marriage mating of Kevin DeBro and Stephen Piercy. <laughs> He's got some little notes on all the songs here. Let me grab some glasses because this stuff is some small writing. 
he's got each song title and what it's about. So he does, it's just, it says fades, fades, cold, cold, but then he's got descriptions. So number one is really bad at the really bad lyrics. Number two, cool backups. Number three, hit single. Number four, sounds like Def Leppard. Number five, totally original. Number six, rocket in my pocket. Number uh, seven, Vinny sings. Number eight, I want to be sedated. Number nine, read the lyrics. Number time, sexual Rambo. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, you know, it is what it is. Got some stickers, but I thought the stickers made the album just because it's like, okay, this guy is, he's a writer. Then, on the, yeah, the back on this sticker says, Vinny rules the effing world. So I don't know. Curious who this guy is. I looked at the radio station call letters, couldn't find anything. I don't know where they're located. 5.90 a.m., an a.m. station back in the 80s playing, or potentially playing metal. Um, but I had to have the albums in decent condition, kind of banged up, but the album itself was in great condition. Now I'm on the search for the second Vinnie Vincent album because I do not have that. Now, then I'm flipping through the various albums, the various stuff, the collections, the compilations. And this catches my eye. Now, I make a big deal out of it only because it is so cool to see an album that I recall seeing back in the day, and that's Welcome to the Metal Zone. Now, compilation from the music on the music for nations. I like how it used to be forty four ninety nine uh, in UK back in the day. Double record set, music for the nations. So at this point, my wife's sitting, and I'm like. This is cool because back in the day, almost anything we found on Music for the Nations tended to be stuff that we would buy. There were certain labels back in the 80s that just screamed by me, and this was one of them. Music, in, music for the Nations was like the distri distribution company for a lot of American bands, and then we'd have a lot of great you know, English bands. So I'm like, not, all of these songs, I have a good majority of them on regular record, but... A compilation like this is just it's just cool and it warms my heart the price was a little pricey on this one and I'm like I'm not buying this I'm not not paying that much money for it but my wife could tell I was kind of triggered by it she's like no that'd be a cool album to have it be like the best of you just put it on and it plays all these random stuff so she grabbed it and she bought it for me she had some cash left over from a transaction she had to do so she paid for this she said make it a Christmas present so anyway it's got rogue mail Exciter, Merciful Fate, Q5, Wendy O. Williams, Tank, Megadeth, TKO, Wasted, Battle Axe, Sabotage, Loudness, Exodus, Earthshaker, Alaska, Rods, and Jack Star. So it was just kind of, it was just cool. And it, like I said, just kind of was like, wow, warm my heart to see one of these cool killer comps from the 80s, these metal comp albums. But there you go. I thought, okay, fine. I let my wife buy it. It, was, it would be worth, the, worth having. There are some of these I don't have. Like, you know, I don't own, and I don't have on vinyl, but I mean, I don't, I don't own any tank at present. I don't have that TKO album. I have it on CD, but I don't have it on vinyl. Uh, Battle Axe, I don't. I have a digital copy of that. I don't know anything by Earthshaker or Alaska. Most of the have. Anyway, I thought it was cool. So yes, I came out of that store in the back of that place with some good stuff. I was so thrilled. I'm so glad we stuck around and waited. I'm not sure what we would have found if we went to any of the other stores that were fairly close by. Now, the next day we went to Charleston and I found, I would call, pretty much a good mother load of stuff. And I'll do that in another video. That's it for this one. No thanks for watching. Rock on and rock hard. <laughs>